Hello and welcome to Anime Style. I am Gary and Reva, and today I'm going to be reviewing the fourth episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Each episode of this series I'll review an episode of the anime, summarising the plot and talking about my thoughts on it. Today is episode four, Kana Goes to School. Not that she needs to. It's the best! Episode 4 opens with Kana watching a load of children wearing hard hats. Okay, I'm kidding, I know they're part of the Japanese school uniform basically, but they just look so weird to me. Kobayashi and Toru discuss that Kana might want to go to school. Kobayashi asks Kana if she does, and soon they're in the shopping district buying supplies. As they're looking for basic school supplies, Kana keeps refusing the ones they find because they're not very cute. Even Toru's confused by Kana's insistence on cute pens. It makes me wonder where the hell Kana learned about pens being cute, and the necessity of that. I mean, they state that she doesn't even know how to use a pen, it's a bit confusing. As they keep looking, Kana asks about various stationery like staplers and stamps, with Toru immediately assuming they're torture devices. I think this can be taken as information about their world, where torture is a lot more prevalent. We've already been able to insinuate before that their homeworld is still in the medieval time with castles and magic, but anyway. Kana picks a red backpack, apparently chosen because she thinks it's drenched in blood, and they go to pay for it. Kobayashi is shocked when the total comes to 38,000 yen. That's about £260 or $330. Toru asks if it's too much, but Kobayashi says it's fine, again raising the question of how much money does she have? Just last episode, they moved into a three-bedroom flat on the salary of one person, and now she's dropping a considerable amount of money on what is essentially Kana's whim. She doesn't need to go to school, she just wants to. Kana sees their reaction to the price and puts back a charm she found and liked. In a school uniform shop, Kobayashi explains that schools have uniforms so everyone looks the same. That way, no one feels different. Toru asks what if they are different, and Kobayashi rather bluntly says that they eliminate you and that it sucks. This heavily implies that she was different growing up and encountered issues. Maybe that's why she's so cynical and drinks so much. She continues the line of thought and talks about how humans don't like anything different. Toru's reaction implies that this isn't an issue for dragons, and Kana silently shows her support for Kobayashi. Back at their flat, Kana shows off her new backpack and Kobayashi calls her cute. In one of her petty sparks of jealousy, Toru borrows the backpack in an attempt to get the same compliment. I don't know if that's her being insecure about Kobayashi, which she certainly is, or if that's just what Toru is like. As Kobayashi points out to her, it's not an attractive quality. Later that night, Kana is shown to have gone to sleep wearing the backpack, and Kobayashi and Toru have another couple moment as they watch her sleep. The next day, Kana goes to school and is introduced as Kana Kobayashi. Interesting note, Toru introduced herself as Toru Kobayashi in a previous episode, implying that Kobayashi is a surname and not a forename. If that's the case, we don't know Kobayashi's first name, and everyone she knows refers to her by her surname. Another interesting point is the schoolchildren don't seem to wear a uniform in ordinary class, somehow undermining the whole, they want them to look the same. Anyway, Toru watches over Kana from nearby as she settles in a school, talking to herself about the inferiority of humans. In class, Kana meets the next... uh, I I hesitate to say main cast member. This is Riko, and I have problems with her. Although her design is generally okay, there are two things about it that I just hate. First of all is her weirdly shiny forehead. Just look at it. This is her first appearance, and it's glowing. The other, we'll get to later. Riko has a problem with the popularity that Kana got in her first day and appears to just be the typical centre of attention drama queen type character. You know, that kind that's just generally meh in every single way. Riko starts shouting at Kana which triggers a flood of fears in her because of what Kobayashi said about being eliminated. Almost immediately Kana decides on how to deal with the situation and begins to cry. This has the desired effect as Rico starts shouting apologies, and she shouts a lot, and then offers Kana some sweets to stop crying. On the way home, Toru remarks about Kana fake crying to defuse the situation, and then asks her why she wanted to go to school. Kana says she thought it'd be fun to watch the kids. Toru goes on to talk dragon to dragon, and says that although they're living with humans, they don't have to act like humans. But Kana replies that as they're sharing their lives with humans, it's better to embrace them rather than hate them. I suppose this is the turning point for Toru's apparent great dislike of humanity, but I find that aspect rather hypocritical. 
How can she say she hates humans but loves Kobayashi? That evening over dinner, Kobayashi presents Kana with the charm she put back earlier in the episode. Kana is immensely touched. When Toru asks for a gift too, Kobayashi hands her the beer she was drinking. Toru is pleased. After a little joke about Toru owning Kobayashi, the style takes a hairpin turn into black and white flashes of destruction with the dragons in disarray. Kobayashi narrates how and why this happened. I don't know why they felt they needed to put in a hook halfway through the episode, but I feel it's probably taking the piss. It cuts to a day ago, when Lukua and Fafnir were visiting to check in on Toru, when Kana arrives home from school with a crying Riko. We go into a flashback within a one day ago, as Riko invites herself round Kana's house. Kana accepts and says that she likes Riko, causing this. This is the other thing about her design I hate. The heart in the mouth thing. I know it's not just in this, I have seen it in other things, but it's just in this so much, and I don't get it. Basically, out of nowhere, Rico has this massive obsession with Kana that, infamously, we'll see more of later. On the way to Kana's, Rico shows her a park she likes. They aren't there long before a ball flies directly at Rico, stopped only by Kana's immense dragon speed. Some older boys rush over to apologise, and Rico immediately shouts at them. While the guy leading the group seems decent, his friend antagonises Rico who shouts a challenge of dodgeball. If Rico wins, the boys can't play at the park anymore. While the nice guy initially refuses, Rico cannot help herself and insults the group until they agree to the challenge. As they leave, she turns crying to Kana and it cuts back to Kobayashi's flat where the assorted dragons offer their assistance. At the park the next day, the boys mock the dragons. One of them throws the ball at Toru who catches it effortlessly. After cheerfully acknowledging Kobayashi's command of no killing, they proceed to destroy the boys, who then flee. Having enjoyed the game, Toru challenges Luka and Fafnir to explosive dodgeball, where they trade incredibly powerful throws. The whole thing perfectly encapsulates the attitude of the dragons, where they exhibit immense powers and use them to play a children's game. Throughout the match, they don't hold back on showing close-ups of Luka's uh, dodgeballs. Anyway, we see the park as it was shown earlier, destroyed and with the dragons collapsed on it. A really nice little detail is the destruction parts neatly around Kobayashi and Riko. Lukua casually states that she'll restore the park to how it was and tweak the memories of anyone who saw. Kobayashi narrates that the dragons took to playing dodgeball regularly. So pretty. A couple of times this episode, Toru makes public displays of affection for Kobayashi, and while they're not exactly rejected, they're just not agreed to. At one point, Toru writes, I heart Miss Kobayashi over and over and shows it to her, but Kobayashi's sort of taken aback. I suppose to put it in context of a real relationship, a reserved person like Kobayashi would be taken aback by a public declaration of love like this, especially if the relationship is new. I feel I should be upfront. I do ship Kobayashi and Toru. I feel I had to state that because I seem to be trying to map where they are as a couple based on these little interactions, but they're not. They're not a couple. I'll try my best to keep the whole shipping thing under wraps, but all of these little bits contribute to why I ship them. Maybe by the end of this series, so will you. This episode was a significant step in Kobayashi's motherly character development. I mean, the plot is about the child in her care going to school for the first time. There aren't a lot of things more motherly than that. Throughout the process, Kobayashi slips seamlessly into the role, guiding and doting on Kana. There's one beautiful little moment when they're walking home after shopping, and Kana silently holds Kobayashi's hand. Kobayashi notices and smiles. Toru displayed a lot of jealousy this episode, mostly because Kobayashi did a lot for Kana. Moments like seeing her holding Kana's hand and insisting she hold hers too, the thing about borrowing Kana's backpack, demanding praise equal to that which Kana got. You get the picture. I generally like the way Toru is written, but I hate the jealousy and pettiness. Kana, this episode showed, to be honest, more adaptability than Toru has. Maybe it's her age or lack of experience with humans, but Kana was shown to be very open and accepting towards their classmates. In fact, people seem to so universally like Toru and Kana that... Uh, I hesitate to make the comparison. It's a bit like the vampires from Twilight. That, on a subconscious level, humans are drawn to like them. Honestly, I doubt that's what they were going for. Maybe Toru's just weirdly charming and Kana is, well, adorable. 
A last mention is that Luca and Fafnir just seem to hang out at Kobayashi's. It's nice that they're worried about Toru, and it's funny that Fafnir is again playing the not Dark Souls game. Interesting, I'll remember that. I gotta tell you, one of the hardest parts of this series is saying Kobayashi about ten times a sentence. It doesn't help that most of the cast is female, so using pronouns gets confusing. If it's okay with you guys, I want to give Kobayashi a much briefer nickname, just so I don't stumble over her name so much. Are there any objections to me calling her Red or something? If you have a better suggestion for a nickname, please let me know and I'll pick one for next episode. I don't really like Rico or most of what she brings to the show, but I suppose she was needed to give Kana a peer her own age. Luckily she doesn't claim as much screen time as the dragons, but yeah, she keeps coming back. This episode wasn't the most interesting for me, but it has some nice dragon dodgeball action, so I suppose it balances out. Thank you very much for watching, please consider pledging to my Patreon linked in the description, and I will catch you later.